love this background. Oh, it's so good! Hi, it me. You're gonna hear the audio in this video change a little bit because I'm trying something new and I didn't use it in the whole video. So you may hear a little bit of a jump. Okay, enjoy the video. Would you like a set? Here, have a berry. They're full of antioxidants. Give me my antioxidants, mom. Expose me, mom. What are you doing? Are you waiting for more peanut butter? Ah. You already got some. No, this is not for you. Oh, there's a bunny. Oh, there's another one. They call him Hello, my legendary children. My name is Ethan, and welcome back to my mental breakdown. How are we doing? How are we feeling? What's our truth today? My truth is that you're an ass. You're not getting my peanut butter toast. I don't know what to tell you. I don't know what you want from me. Oh, you look crazy. Oh my god, you look so crazy. Can I give you berries? Are you allowed to eat berries? I don't think you're allowed to eat berries. I'm not going to give you berries. Unless we're on the root and berry retreat. <laughs> So one crazy thing about me is that I know the most ridiculous amount of like late 2000s, early 2010s Nickelodeon trivia. Basically anything from like Drake and Josh. There's a New Jersey? Yeah, they just opened it. Till the end of like the iCarly Victorious era. No. <laughs> So relatively often on my Instagram stories, I'll put up like five or six questions that are like deep cut Nickelodeon trivia. So if you want to participate, make sure to follow me on Instagram. But one of the questions the other day was, what of the following did Drake say in the wedding where he married Yuka, the Udonian, uh, Josh's Udonian pen pal? Drake's the one that said he ain't cool to you go tie when the sun was in the house of Carfuck. Okay, I'm gonna talk about something crazy. My friend Ariel and I, you know Ariel, she's been on this channel a million times. Con. C-O-N. Sing away. <laughs> Samoa. If you don't know who she is, go back and watch some of my old videos with her. Also, we are planning on making a video together soon. I can't pick up this f***ing strawberry. Firmly grasp it. Firmly grasp it! Wait, I do this weird thing when I eat blueberries. Blue and berry. Okay, now say blueberry. Blueberry. So I eat blueberries like this. I take them, and then I... <laughs> Ariola. Ariel and I went to Oz Exotic Plants the other day, and I was unwell, Mama. It was the most beautiful thing I've ever seen in my entire life. Like, I walked in, and I saw this giant Monstera. And I looked at the Monstera, and the Monstera looked at me, and it was a lot like that video of Billie Eilish meeting Justin Bieber at Coachella. <laughs> Well, we just kind of stand there and we're like, I see you. No, I see you. No, I see you. No, I see you. And then I walked over and gave it a hug. But I will be going there again soon and I plan on making a, a, a full video about that place. I'm going to put these on. And if you're not familiar with the place, it's like part plant shop, part like botanical garden museum showroom on some little shop of horrors, Jurassic Park kind of shit. Feed me now! Oh, I can't. I'm but I did get a few plants. I got, oh, she's right there. You can see her. This is a Raphidophora tetrasperma. Some people know them as the mini monstera. Doggy, doggy, doggy. What are you, what are you licking? Why are you licking things? I bought two plants because they were like only single vine. And I have this in a spot that it's getting a lot of light. So I'm hoping that it grows fairly quickly. And we are approaching the growing season. Ha 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 I'm mentally ill. But look at the leaves on this. Like, oh, 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 oh. Oh my god, great, my dog's gonna lick her f***ing vagina in the background, great. Let's put you back in your home! And then I also got... Come here, come here, come here, come here. This is Katya. Katya! She's an Ethereum Plumanii. Plumanii, Plumanii, Plumanii. Tomato, tomato, potato, potato. Who the f*** says tomato or pizzato? Tomatoes. I've got to be tomatoes. I have her right under a grow light in probably the lightest corner of my room. And right behind you is a west-facing window with like a, a house on the other side of it, so get a... I'm having a stroke. It gets a lot of really bright filtered light. We also went to another place that was nearby. I forget what it's, it's like Gardener's Landscape or something like that. And I got this staghorn fern. I love staghorn ferns. I'm not really the biggest fan of ferns in general, but there's something about a staghorn fern that just, it tickles my petty whistle. Is that a phrase? It is now. It tickles my fancy. It tickles my peach. It arouses my funny bone. It arouses my psyche. <laughs> This is what she does. She looks at the door, and then she looks at me. And then she looks back at the door, and then she looks back at me. <laughs> like, open it, you Let me the f out of your room. <laughs>
I need that shoe. I need the shoe. I need it. Please, please. <laughs> Thank you. Do you want the shoe? You want the shoe? Okay. Goodbye. Hello, it's later in the day and I've changed my outfit. Have I changed my attitude? No, it's still rotten. Where's my phone? Where's the phone? Where's my telephone? It's the misplacement for me, sis. Where are my notes? I need to find my notes. I made notes for this video. I'm a f***ing professional. Pop off, wig. Pop off, sis. Expose me, mom. You didn't have to snap so hard. Cut the cameras. Dead end. So for those of you who are new to the- So for those of you who are new to this channel, I don't- I was gonna say I don't often make plant videos, but that's a damn lie. You calling me a liar? I ain't calling you a truther. If you're new to this channel, Hi, welcome. I make a myriad of videos exposing my numerous undiagnosed mental illnesses. Any water? I need it! I drink this like a three-year-old with a sippy cup. But as I was saying, I make all kinds of videos on this channel. <laughs> And one of those categories is plants. And just as I make a lot of plant videos, I also watch a lot of plant videos. I noticed that there are a lot of videos out there that are targeted to specific types of plants and not so much like general things. So I'm here today to tell you some of the secrets that I wish I knew when I first started keeping plants. So, shall we begin? <laughs> So probably the biggest mistake that new plant keepers make is overwatering. For example, I was talking to somebody today about plants and they said that they killed their cactus because they overwatered it. Now, a cactus especially is something that you do not want to overwater. But in general, underwatering is way better than overwatering because majority of the time, a plant will more easily recover from being underwatered than it will be from being overwatered. Does that make sense? Did I word that correctly? Did I word that awkwardly? Plants are more often going to recover from being underwater than they are from being overwatered. That was the first time in my life that I got a sentence out without stumbling over it. <laughs> now this doesn't mean go months and months without watering it. There are a lot of plants, most of the plants actually in here prefer to dry out between waterings. Like this monstera here, all these philodendrons stuff back here. Really the only plants that I have that I don't let completely dry out are my calatheas, my two ferns, my syngonia, is it up there? Yeah, oh you can't even see it. I'll get it. This is a syngonium. I'm not not sure what cultivar this is. I think it's like it's like berry something. These don't like to get too dry, but they also don't want to be wet all the time. Especially something like a philodendron or a hoya or a succulent, you really want to be cautious of overwatering because that is what is going to make it die. Actually, the plant that's like right behind the camera, like there's a little leaf sticking out here. Um, I overwatered it and now it's kind of dying. You're f***ing kidding. I forgot to press record on my audio thing. <laughs> plant video take. I don't f***ing know anymore. Okay, now we have good audio. I have this shirt on inside out. I'm literally a moron. So tip number two is to group plants that have similar care together. When I was just starting out, I would put all my philodendrons in one corner, all my calatheas in one corner, all my whatever's in another corner, putting all of your, say, medium light plants that like to dry out between waterings, putting all of them together, putting all of your high light, high humidity plants in one section. It'll help you to like compartmentalize what plants need what care. And will also help you in the long run because like I, I obviously don't do that anymore. I have everything mixed up. And because I did that when I started out, I can look at a plant and right off the bat know exactly what I need to do with it. But something that I still do is I group all of my calatheas together because calatheas, oh calatheas. Let's think of the plant community as a group of high school students. Let's think of philodendrons as like the cool skater boy who like doesn't really need much to survive, just always seems to be having a good day. And let's think of calatheas as like the popular girls. From afar, you're like, wow, you're so pretty. You, and then you get up close and you think, wow, you're kind of damaged and up. And they're always on the brink of bursting into tears. That's what calatheas are. They have very specific conditions that they need or else they will just wither away and die. For example, a few months ago I bought this beautiful calathea ornata. I brought it home, it was healthy and gorgeous and it was doing so well for a while. <laughs> I don't even know what to say. My other two calatheas are doing pretty well though. And I group them all together. They're right next to the humidifier. They're getting lots of light. I water them with rainwater. And that's my next tip. I put a five gallon bucket under all of the rain gutters outside my house. And I collect the water. I fill up my watering cans with it and I water my plants with it. If it's cold outside, let the water warm up before you water your plants with it. You don't want to shock the roots with the cold water. Don't do that. For the most part, your tap water is going to be fine. But there are some plants like calatheas and also a lot of carnivorous plants like pitcher plants and Venus flytraps and stuff like that that are sensitive to the minerals and the salts that are put into your municipal tap water. And instead of buying distilled water, you can collect rainwater to water your plants. It's also a lot more eco-friendly and you don't run up your water bill if you have a lot of plants. My next tip, which kind of goes off of watering, is to fertilize often with a very weak solution. I like to, I'll show you. I like to use fish emulsion. I think there's something like controversial about fish emulsion in the plant community. I don't know what it is. Somebody said that they're made of like ground up shark livers or something, but it's not, it's herring, I think. You can like make your own fertilizer out of, that's a the whole other video that I could, Possibly do. <coughs> oh my god, I'm joking. Allergies, gotta love them. Can't live with them, can't live without them. I wish I could live without my allergies. I wouldn't be 
crying. I, I think this says use a tablespoon. Yeah, one tablespoon per gallon of water feed every two weeks. That's what this says. I use about a half a teaspoon per gallon of water almost every time I water my plants. I also don't stop fertilizing during the off season. I slow down a little bit and do maybe every other, every three waterings, but I don't completely stop because most of the time the plants are still growing, even if it's just a little bit. My next tip is for you people who are worried about light. One of the best investments I have ever made is grow lights. The ones that I have, I will put the link in the description below. They were relatively inexpensive. I think I got a pack of eight for like maybe 60 bucks. They're super bright. They're LED so they don't get hot and they give off a soft, warm white light. It's not like that gross, bright, blue, white nonsense, and nor is it like the piss yellow nonsense that makes you look like you have jaundice. I feel a sneeze coming. It went away. But I have a lot of grow lights and it brings a ton of light into even the darkest corners of my room, especially when you get a lot of them. Another great thing you can do if you're worried about light, if you're able to, is to bring your plants outside when it gets warm. It just started getting warm here in PA. The days have been well over 60 degrees, so I've been taking my plants outside to get some fresh air and some natural sunlight. But you never want to put them in direct sunlight. There are certain plants that can handle it for a very brief period of time, but if you put it in direct sunlight for all day, the leaves are going to get scorched. My next tip is to get a humidifier. Trust me, your plants will benefit from it more than you would think. And also so it keeps the room less dry. It's good for your sinuses. It's good for your throat. So unless you live in like Florida where the humidity is like 193% all the time, you and your plants will absolutely benefit from getting a humidifier. And you can get one for cheap online or at Walmart or something for like 25, 30 bucks. Or if you want to splurge, I'll put the link to the one I have in the description. It has a cool setting, a warm setting and a hot setting. And you can set the humidity on it to kick on and kick off to maintain a certain level of humidity in a room. My next tip, and this doesn't go for all plants, but a lot of times letting your plants get root bound before you up pot them is a good thing because when you repot them they're going to spend their time and energy rebuilding their root system instead of pushing out more growth on the top that's why a lot of people say to repot them just before the growing season so then they have time to fill out their root section and then push growth out on the top my next tip is to take cuttings to make your plants look bushy first of all you need to find out whether or not your plant can be propagated by cutting it most plants you can figure out a way to propagate them by cutting them but a lot of them like calatheas and what else a lot of fern species some of the philodendron species and the thematophyllum species, uh, like I have a thematophyllum xanadu. Oh, sneeze. <laughs> Remember when dabbing was a thing? Why was that a thing? Why did we ever do that? But here's a clip of me doing that to a plant that n needs it. Hi. Hi, it me. Oh, I need scissors. So I have my scissors. They're nice and clean. You always want to clean your scissors or pruners or whatever you're using to prevent infection. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take and see these long, gorgeous vines? They're getting cut. <laughs> so, oh, this pains me so much. And it actually does help the plant in the long run. I'm gonna make all of these almost even. So we're gonna, oh, 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 oh. But look at all those cuttings that we got. So I'm gonna do this one. I think that's enough for now. You wanna make sure you get a leaf and a node. And the node is the little part that the leaf grows from. And it usually has a little bit of an arrow root coming out of it. And that, if you stick it in soil, that will grow a new root system and it'll become a new plant. So out of this one, I can make two good cuttings. And then see how there's two leaves in there? I'm gonna cut one leaf off and then this is gonna go down in the soil. You can really only do it with one leaf. I can just stick that right in the soil. And the thing you wanna remember is you wanna keep the top of the soil moist until these tap. And just keep in mind that you wanna keep the top of the soil moist until these cuttings have time to root out. Also, if you don't feel comfortable just sticking them right in the soil, you could root them out in water. Literally just like fill a little bottle or vase or something up with water and then stick the cuttings down in it and they will root out. Oh. And my last tip for you, my last tip for you, oh my god, I'm already missing. I hate myself. My last tip is to do your research and don't stress. You need to find out what works for you. Consider all of the tips that you get, but also take them with a grain of salt. There's no one right way to keep plants. It's more about experimenting and seeing what works for you based on trial and error. Always do your research on your specific plant. Try your best to understand the environment that your plant is going to be living in. Like, how's the humidity? How's the level of light? But most of all, don't stress about your plants. I don't stress about my plants. My plants are probably the only thing in my life that brings me no stress whatsoever. And they shouldn't. The purpose of keeping plants is to be a stress reliever, to get yourself more in touch with nature. You don't have to be a plant expert to keep healthy plants. And caring for plants isn't anywhere near as scary as people think it is. Like, I have, I don't even know how many I have in here anymore. Let's count. One, two, seven, three, eight, eight four, four, nine, five, ten, five, ten, eleven. Six. Let's just say I have a lot. But that's all the- Oh, voice crack of the century. Am I 12? I know I look 12. But that's all I got for this one. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure to hit that like button and subscribe to my channel. Make sure you check out the podcast that my friends and I do. We're going to start making a new episodes soon, which I'm really, really excited about. I released an EP about two months ago now, and the links to that and the links to all my social media accounts are in the notes below. But always remember that you are enough. I will see you next week.